Hi everyone, I'm Norman Bolter and this is Frequency Bone Summer Music Connection 11. Making the most of what you have. Video 6. And I've been going crazy trying to figure out what to call this video. Um, rhythmical articulation plus pitch plus tone in other words, why don't we call it the juggler? Because it's a juggling act. In a certain way, if someone says, okay, let's work on your breathing, and you're working on your breathing, and someone says, okay, get the mouthpiece up there, so now you're playing with the mouthpiece. And think about a young player. Then you throw this element in and this element in. And sometimes, of course, the skill of the teacher is waiting to the appropriate time where we're going to throw something else in, knowing that's going to be a process of assimilation and integration, where they're going to have to take the one thing that they do and try to figure out how the next thing they're supposed to do fit together. And this is where a concept can come in really, really useful. So the teacher will be the concept, the living example, and maybe they'll do and the student will go, oh, okay, and then they'll try to copy it. Now, the value of that is that someone doesn't really have to think a lot of time. They just try to go with their feeling and in instinctual senses and try to play it, which can be great. You can cover a lot of ground that way. Um... Until then, you want to get more specific. Then the teacher will again go, no, not like that. Now let's do this. And it was a little more bell tone oriented. So instead of talking about all the physiological instructions that it would take to do that, the teacher will play it. Perhaps the student will pick up the gist or catch the wave of what the teacher's playing and can put it into their system. Now, let's just put that aside for one second because maybe all my videos should be called The Juggler because sometimes there's a lot of information thrown out. Um, in the last video, I was talking about working on rhythm. And then I said, how can I work on rhythm without articulation? And that's where rhythmical articulation and the Bona book came up. And I said, and tone, can you work on all these things without thinking of your tone at all? So if you have a basic good sound, someone says, now we're gonna work on different kinds of articulation, for example, they'll probably think the tone is in there enough in your habit life, to then start adding some articulation. Or maybe they fuse them together from the beginning of toom, toom. Or maybe your teacher said ta, ta. Maybe your teacher said to, to. But they're integrating the enunciation, the articulation, with the sound. Now, as was demonstrated, in the uh, Bona number 45, beginning few measures that I played a little while ago, there were different articulations. One was kind of rounded, and the whole rest of it was long. The other thing, the notes were a little decayed each time and had a heavier or more ac accentuated articulation. Now, some people might be fine playing in certain types of articulation, like legato. People love playing legato. Sometimes it's harder for them to all of a sudden do something that isn't legato, that needs a little more front to each note, let alone playing short, really short. So all these things can be worked on if you realize that it's going to be a juggling act, and if you take your time, 
you'll make the most out of your practice time and working on what you're supposed to work on or what you've set out to work on. Now the tendency, sometimes even for me to this day, is if I have a passage like that down at 8th and 16th, is I'll hit them a little firmer. I know some people go, well, it's not firmer, it's just the 16th. So you take that articulation and you don't make it so enunciatedly pointed. It's still clean and clear, but it's with the same drumstick. It's not all of a sudden you change drumsticks, for example, to hit the 16th note. So it speaks better. Um, and so you can take all your articulations, for example, as many as you think that you have. Legato, tenuto, what you would call regular, and then different kinds of staccato. But each one of these different kinds, uh, different articulations, have a spectrum to them. They all have a spectrum. There can be dry staccato, wet staccato, cold staccato, warm staccato. And the same thing with tenuto. There's different brands, depending on what we want to, in essence, want to um, express musically. So the more languages that we actually have, more drumsticks that we have, more different kinds of bowings that we have, translated for us as brass players or trombone players, um, articulations that we have, we'll be able to do more with. And so each one, spend your time with the different kind of articulations that, that you have, some basic ones. And think of what's happening to the tone. Think of, do some feel better at softer dynamics? Do some feel better at louder dynamics? <laughs> I was, I would say I was quasi staccato, not incredibly, incredibly short, not incredibly packed, okay? And I was at a mezzo piano-ish dynamic. Now, what if I made it tenuto, mezzo forte? They both felt pretty equal, actually. Part of me kind of enjoyed the shorter one more. But we have to take our biases and put them out of the way. While we're working on certain things, it might not be as easy for us. So making the most of articulation, making the most out of our rhythm, you'll feel that they'll go hand in hand because maybe there's certain rhythms that you can do that you can articulate very well, and other rhythms you cannot articulate as well. So always slow down your speeds metronomically while working on the things that are more difficult. As obvious as, as, obvious as that sounds, some people sometimes have trouble with that one. Um, pitch. Can we have tone without pitch? No, is the answer. You can have what would maybe be called an unstable pitch because the sound waves a bit. And I probably would put myself in the category of my intonation is maybe a little more water-like, meaning that it's not just, you know, some cement platform that won't move. Now, it, especially if I have to think of it, don't move, don't move. <laughs> not work very well for me. Some people, yes, that works great. Think of bricks, and that offers them a stability that they can sit on. Now, if I really tap into something really solid and immovable, yes, like a mountain. <laughs> Uh, 
I can feel there's a certain groundedness to it. Um, if I'm thinking a little bit more, my basic general sound, at this point in time at least, is going to have more fluidity. It's going to want to, even holding out a note, it's going to subtly want to breathe a little bit. I do not shut that off. So you're talking about, is there a home base articulation for you? Is there your home base tone? Is there your home base intonation? Or are they fluid? Mine tend to be a little bit more fluid. I probably have some. I think my sound is more water-based in a certain kind of way. Probably got extremely fire-based when I would start playing very, very, very loud. Um, and in certain kinds of things, it was very solid. So if you think something really solid, you're going to think more earth. And here we get into the elements. You ever work with your sound? Like an element? Water. And what kind? Earth. And what kind? What kinds of earth? And go all through them. Fire. What kind of fire? A raging forest fire or a quiet campfire? And you can keep working with them. Air. Is it a tornado? Or is it a calm breeze on a warm summer night? So when you start adding other elements of nature in your playing, you'll start working on your articulation differently. You'll start working on your tone differently. Um, you'll start working on pitch. You know, pitch, pitch is a really, it's an interesting subject for me. Um, some people really, you'd listen to them and say, wow, they have rock solid pitch. Their pitch just, when they're on a note, it stays there. Probably listen to me, you might not think that as much. Uh, certain things, sure, but I think on other things, maybe not. Um, so, it is what it is. Um, you have to know your tendencies. Um, but I'm into really playing and discovering the territory. Play your arvins and your co-prosh exercises and your bona exercises. Put on a metronome to it and put subtly different styles underneath it too because that'll subtly change your articulation, won't it? Won't it? Do you only want one kind of articulation? You might have one, like I would say, one that feels natural to you, your home base articulation your home base sound. But, how are we going to expand on that? So if you think of different things in nature, they're going to change. If you think of all the different rhythms in the orchestra, how would it be in a certain kind of pizzicato of a string bass we're playing it? How would an oboe articulate it? When everyone's playing short, does it sound exactly the same, except you can probably identify that it's short? What about like some of the percussion instruments, like tempo blocks, where it gets, I mean, it's so firm. <laughs> and so, when's the last time you played your arbons, sounding like tempo blocks? Wanna make the most of what you have? And be able to juggle these things and unify them? Connect with something besides just the technique and actions of what it takes to produce what you want. But actually have a purpose for it. Go outside with your hand or something. 
hit on different objects. They're different. Build a different kind of relationship besides just using your, you know, left brain. Just the mechanical that goes like this brain. It will really help truly integrate and make the most of what you have.